Welcome to the Queen Street Crossing. Tall, elegant and proud, it's one of the most striking and important structures in the world. It connects Edinburgh to the Kingdom of Fife and spans some 2,638 metres across the Firth of Forth. It is actually one of the largest cable stay bridges in the world. In terms of three towers, it's the longest cable stay bridge in the world. Its towers, just a little under 210 metres tall, make it the tallest bridge in the UK, higher than the highest point within Denmark. Design and construction are intrinsically linked on a bridge such as the Queensbury Crossing. You can't have one without the other. And a number of different construction methodologies were used in the delivery of the Queensbury Crossing. For the cable stay bridge, deck sections were lifted up alternately either side of the tower in a balanced cantilever formation. On the south of the cable stay bridge, there's some 550 metres of approach viaduct. On the north side, there were specific challenges to overcome. The ground in this location was very steep. As a result of that, it was decided not only to launch, but to pivot the bridge, and this saved some 100,000 tonnes of excavation. The Queen Street Crossing sits alongside the fourth bridge and the fourth road bridge. The new bridge actually reflects something of the fourth rail bridge. In that, in essence, they're very similar structurally. They're both balanced cantilevers. On the rail bridge, the stiffness is generated through massive tubular members. Whilst on the Queen Street Crossing, that stiffness is generated by the introduction of overlapping stay cables. The stay cables can be replaced strand by strand so that the bridge remains operational during that replacement process. And actually, wind within the Firth and Forth is a key consideration, both in service uh, and during construction. And in service, what we have are wind barriers to actually protect the users of the bridge and increase the availability of the structure. So the Queen Street Crossing is far more likely to be open to traffic during those severe wind events than the existing bridge. Bridges of this type do bring with them a lot of risk. And so it's quite usual for contractors to join into joint ventures to share that risk. On this site, weather conditions have been enormously influential. Yes, we are next to Edinburgh, but actually out there on the bridge deck, you would think you're out in the North Sea. The less that you do out there, the better and the easier it is. That's where engineering design can significantly affect safety. To get the best out of a joint venture, you've got to get the best out of the people, you've got to get them working together. I'm fortunate here that we have a fantastic DSR team on site. They understand the pressures of construction, they have construction expertise as well as design expertise, and they have integrated with and worked with my team very successfully and I'm truly grateful for that. I'm extremely proud of the crucial role the people at Ramble have played in creating this beautiful structure. This was always much more than a technical challenge. Transport Scotland were clear they demand a structure that could stand proudly against its illustrious predecessors, and that is what we've delivered. We're delighted to see the completion of Queen's Ferry Crossing, which joins our portfolio of truly outstanding bridges. Tall, elegant and proud, and now complete. You know, this project's taken six years in the making, and a lot of people have put a huge amount of effort, dedication, expertise and tenacity into delivering this magnificent structure. Bridges can be far more than just crossing points. They can actually generate a regional identity and a national pride. This is an inspirational bridge. It shows the aspirations of both this region and Scotland as a whole. <laughs>